Um, appreciate the Sunday school class. Um, have you had any birthdays? Any birthdays this week? Like yesterday we had Morgans. Two, another one. So we got three. All right. If you will come to your feet and we'll sing happy birthday. Sing happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to everyone. Uh, announcements, um, I've got on my calendar. Uh, just remember our school supplies, we're still taking up the drive for the school supplies. Uh, we're still taking up the Christmas shoe box supplies. I've seen some stuff come in earlier. We thank everyone for helping with both of these um, drives that we're doing uh, for the schools and for the Christmas shoe box. We thank everyone for your prayers and the help within that. Um, I've got on my calendar Hope for the Mountains. Is that tonight? Yeah. yeah. At the, you going to announce that? Yeah, I'll announce that. Okay, so Johnny will announce that one. Uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday on September the 28th, uh, the Walk for Life is scheduled. That is the Ash Pregnancy Center. It's what we take up the birthday bottle the money for we just support that uh, last year we had several to turn out and do the walk Shana if you will give us times on that Be in prayer for that. Uh, I know the, the ones that do walk, it's usually a pretty good group, large group. Ones that cannot do the walk, like she says, the prayers and stuff, they do a lot of the prayers there at the, um, in behind, across from WJ Hardware there in the corner where the old train car is. So that is this coming Saturday. October on the calendar I have a birthday coming up first year one year Rosalie uh, I think they're having a gathering here at the Fellowship Hall on Friday I keep forgetting the time 530. 5.30 Friday afternoon for Rosalie her birthday party one year old so we'll be part of that we're blessed to have the one year old in the church we're very loved. October, we do have a revival plan. Johnny set uh, a revival for October the 13th on Sunday through Thursday the 17th. We have a special guest speaker, uh, Reverend Dustin Farmer. will be here speaking the week of the 13th of October. That following Saturday, we do have the 19th scheduled for our soup uh, day here at the church that we have done for several years. Uh, everyone, if you've been part of that, you know how good it is and fellowship and um, everyone come out and be part of that. If you've not been able to make one of them, we ask you to please try to make that. Um, we set up out here beside the Fellowship Hall, we have an open fire, um, open fire pit, soup, pot. So uh, we cook that, we can a lot of it, and then they'll give it out throughout the winter as needed. The 19th. You've got molasses or cane around that? 
Hope we move forward. Okay. Yeah, so we need you because you got the pot. <laughs> yeah. Does he? So we might do two Okay. That would work. Some likes meat in it, some don't. So that works. Vegetable. That works. Um, on October the 27th, that will be on Sunday. We've also got on the calendar for the OCC, which is the Operation Christmas Child Packing Party. That's where they take the gifts. You have to build the boxes that's here. We put the materials in the boxes and get those ready for being distributed out, taken to Boone to the Samaritan's Purse for the delivery for the children for that. So that is on the 27th of October. November, might as well tell it. you'll go into November. The drop off for those boxes are planned on Saturday, November the 9th. And then that following Sunday, we do have our old fashioned day scheduled for November the 10th on Sunday. And we've done that for several years. Everyone's enjoyed that. Um, please be come out and be part of that. We usually have a meal after that also. Um, everyone dress up sort of their old older fashion days. We get a lot of the men in bibbed overalls and blue jeans and pretty normal Sunday for us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so nah, but they do. We dress up a little bit for the old fashioned day. I know a lot of the ladies they go out and. They've had bonnets made and some of the older stuff. It's really fun. Everybody enjoys it. It's a, I look forward to it every year. Uh, the food, not just the food, but just the uh, gathering and the, the time we spend together. It's nice. Uh, November, I did see the, I don't know if we've talked about it, but in our planning meeting, it is scheduled for a Pigeon Forge trip. I know we just got back from Pennsylvania. So we're, the next trip we have planned is Pigeon Forge. We've got it on the calendar for the 14th, Thursday, November 14th, 15th, and 16th. That'd be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is what I have on my calendar. So keep that in mind. We'll look more into that. Just a heads up on it. Uh, services tonight with Hope for the Mountain. Let's on the calendar. I'm going to make the announcement on Hope for the Mountain to meet this Saturday night, so we'll just cancel for this. Okay. So we'll be here Thursday night. Be here Thursday night for Thursday night services. Uh, the ones that can make that, it's been a, uh, we've been having good services on that. If you will, please come out on Thursday night. We usually meet about six. So come on out Thursday nights. Uh, we'll read some out of the Word of God and uh, study a little and uh, it's been a good time, good learning, good fellowship and uh, God is working throughout our church and community so we thank you for that. Anyone else have any announcements that I've missed? Can we get a head count on how many people are interested in being part of the Christmas club? So I can we're looking for a hand. <laughs> if you are, all right, we got them coming up, so let me count. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. I'm seeing you about fourteen. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his family, most of them was raised up. So, yep. yeah. So, okay. yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. So that's a thanks everyone for being part of that and willing to step up and do that. That's that's a blessing. Anyone else got anything? We like to show the care and the love in our schools that God would have us to do. And that's sort of what we're doing through that. So thank you, Emily, for doing that in our schools. I know it's
So, anyone else? Remember the non-spoken, these prayer requests, and the non-spokens. If you will, come to your feet, and we'll move to 11 o'clock services. I get four to come up, please. Is it two, or? Well, I got four Sunday regular. Is that right? This the, yeah, today's the fourth Sunday. That's okay. One, you yeah, got regular off on fourth Sunday. We got a five. We got a five an extra Sunday this month. Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your blessings. We just thank you for the salvation. We thank you for the time we spent here in church this morning with the the singing, the praise, and the Sunday school lessons, and the eleven o'clock message that you're sending our way with Johnny. Lord, we just ask you to be with all the prayer requests, the spoken, the unspoken, be with each and every one. Give an extra blessing today for the one that just came out and be part of the church. We thank the church for filling the pews, Lord. We got some extra seats, but we do have good, good uh, attendances in our churches, and we're thankful for that. For uh, So thankful for each and every one that's come out. Lord, just uh, lift it up to you to deal with our church and help us in your will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Kids, the pennies, and turn, shake hands.
Good morning. It's good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. Glad you're here. We maybe uh, got to share two or three things with you this morning. Uh, one, the Hope for the Mountains. It's the Hope for the Mountains prayer team that meets every Tuesday is having a worship service. They're having it at the high school. And uh, uh, they gave me a, a, a little flyer, and I got some of these for you young people if you want to go emphasis on young people tonight. They're going to have a, a pizza party at 5 o'clock. All the pizza you need. And uh, then they will be having a speaker, to, uh, an inspirational speaker that will speak uh, to, mainly to the young people. But it's the emphasis as they want the adults to come and to worship with them. So uh, the pizza starts at 5, the worship service starts at 6 or shortly thereafter. They do have special music and and so they're encouraging everyone to come to the high school tonight. They've had, uh, they had four nights of meetings Sunday night through uh, uh, Wednesday night. And the re uh, reason they didn't have it Thursday and Friday is because of the faith fest that was in Wilkes County. And then they uh, uh, continued on on Sunday night. So if any of you young people want to go or any adults or whatever, I got uh, these flyers I'll, I'll share with you and you can go be a part of that. And then we'll be working on our revival, be looking forward to Brother Dustin Farmer coming. As I shared with you, some of you the other day, uh, Dustin's, uh, uh, him and uh, his daughter and Kaylin are big buddies, and so Kaylin said she is moving in with us for the week, uh, but uh, he'll be here on Sunday night through th uh, Thursday night, and that's 13 through 17. And so I, I encourage you to be making your plans, be here uh, for that, and we'll, we'll worship together on uh, the, the week of the 13th through 17th. Now, I didn't make a lot of comments last Sunday uh, on account I know a lot of you were tired. Uh, we did have a good trip, everything worked good. And Teresa was sharing with me Thursday, I guess it was, that I said, we should have all had a positive attitude the way God had blessed us for the trip we had and all of that. And Kenny, Kenny's done made up his mind we need to sign a petition and send uh, to the, the, the road department that they need to work on the roads, on, uh, especially on 81 that beat us to death. And, uh, I tell you, they are rough, but we did have a good trip and it was blessed. And I enjoyed each one of you going and uh, if you can ever get a chance to go with us on one of our trips, uh, we, we have a good time, enjoy ourselves, and do what we want to, so it was good. And Sean, I, I had to laugh at Sean, he called me, <laughs> I don't remember what was that. He said, don't buy fuel till you get to a certain <laughs> exit. He said, he paid, what'd you pay, something <laughs> <laughs> Next exit down. Uh, so he called us elsewhere to fuel that. Uh, so we did find some high fuel as we went north, but we had a lot of fun out of it anyway. And it was good. Sean drove and he had to come home early and he is ahead of us. And uh, uh, so he, he let us know what was going on down the road. Good to see each one of you said in the house of the Lord this morning. I. I was uh, going to pick on them over their birthdays. Uh, they, uh, several of them had a birthday today. Uh, Morgan became uh, 18 uh, yesterday, and we give her a hard time. Our grandchildren are grown. The youngest one was 17 a few days ago, so uh, they've grown up on us, but we love our kids. And I'm glad each one of you here this morning. Appreciate them being here in the house of the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn in the book of Jeremiah. I want to share with you just a little bit this morning. We've, uh, uh, maybe I'm, I'm looking at things. We had uh, two different revivals going on. I made the announcements last Sunday this past week in the county, and uh, they were both good. I tried to rotate my nights and get in and out different ones, and God's really blessed. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say some things this morning that'll maybe make you stop and think about it. Uh, one of the preachers made a comment one night. Anybody that 
had a special object of prayer you think I wanted to pray about. The altar was open, nobody came. The pastor the next night of the different churches they rotated, he said, we all have objects of prayer. We all have special needs. We said, nobody came to pray about them. Made me think, how stubborn are we? Now, I'm, I'm not being no harder on you than I am me. But we're, we have a, a, almost a stubborn nature. God says we have not because we ask not. That's in prayer. We make our petitions known. We are so guilty sometimes. We, we want to see all these things happen. But yet we're not willing to pray. Now think about it for a moment. Or maybe we'll whisper a, a silent prayer. But are we willing to really commit to God and say, God, I want to see this bad enough to pray about it. Jeremiah began to write to the people of Israel, Judah in particular, which was, and by the way, the religious group of the Hebrew people. He began to write to them to challenge them that they might open up their heart to God and let God do things for them. But Israel and Judah in particular rejected God. I look around, boy, and we're there as God's people. I don't know whether we, and I, heaven knows we shouldn't be ashamed to come and pray. We got a need, we're to come and talk to God. When he said we have not because we ask not, that's because we didn't pray, we didn't ask God. God's wanting to do things for us. He's got it all in hand, but sometimes we're, we're guilty. And then when the message comes and God's dealing with our heart, we reject it. And because of that, we're missing the blessings of God. It's not him that's losing out. So in Jeremiah, I'm, I'm going to read the, the verse in just a moment. But I'm going to talk to you out of the 16th chapter and all the way. It's all emphasis put on our relationship with God. Now I know it's in the Old Testament, but God was writing to his people. In 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, 14th verse. He said, if my people, now that's Old Testament, but my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, said, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. Our land needs some healing. We're in trouble. I'm, I'm telling you, if you look around, you don't even have to watch the news. <laughs> Somebody made a comment about going to Walmart a while ago. You can go to Walmart, you can say, well, we're in trouble. We got problems. Church, God's expecting us to set the example. God's expecting us to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and let him change things. God's not changed. He said, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. I'm the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. God's wanting us to, to trust him and talk to him about the problem. We can see things happen. Before, as churches, or as has been in this week in this series of meetings that was going on, or when we have our revival, before we're going to have revival, we're going to have to ask God about it. We're going to have to come clean with God. We're going to ask God for revival, then God will send revival. I'm going to read in, uh, you can look in the sixth chapter of Jeremiah, and I'll tell you which verse maybe I, I'm touching on. But I, I just chose to have uh, Shana write up one verse. He said, Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Even the thought, uh, fruits are their thoughts. Let that sink in for a minute. What are you thinking about? Boy, Eddie, 
Eddie was working on the message, laying a, a, a platform for it in Sunday school. What, wh how our mind should be saturated with the Word of God instead of being controlled by the things of the world or the flesh of the world. Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate it, buddy. When we begin to see all of this, he said the thoughts of our mind, because they have not hearkened unto my words. Are you listening when God's speaking? Are you listening when you read the word of God or when the Holy Spirit's dealing with you? Are you hearing him? Sometimes we, <laughs> we hear, but that's all. We don't do anything about it. Jeremiah was writing to a people that he had wrote a whole chapter about how they had rejected what God wanted them to do. I'm not real sure, but I'd say most of us, when we take inventory of what we're doing, we find that we're not exactly doing what God wants us to, or we would change some things in our life. Every one of us has room for improvement in our lives. We're not born full grown. We're not... If it was, God would take us on to heaven, but he's working on us. We're that lump of clay that God's shaping and molding and making us what he wants us to be. But he wants us to listen. Now I'm telling you, I'm going to read just a little further in a moment in the seventh chapter, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen if God's people don't hear his word. He's going to let us reap what we sow. He said, be not confused, be not dismayed. Man is going to reap exactly what he sows. You and I are going to reap a harvest that we don't want. If the church doesn't open its eyes and turn back and get where God needs it to be, we're in trouble. Because we're going to reap what we're sowing. He said, be not confused. Whatever we sow, we must reap. Most, a lot of the time we are reaping to the flesh, and of the flesh we're going to reap corruption. So God's wanting us to see it. He goes on further and he said, Hearken unto my word, nor to my law, but rejected it. The 19th verse is trying to get us to see we're headed down the wrong road. He's going to uh, explain to us that what we're doing in the flesh, we're going to have to reap for. He's trying to get us to humble our hearts and pray, as he said in 2 Chronicles 7th chapter, that we'd humble ourselves and pray and he would hear. God knows where we're at. You're not hid from him. He knows exactly where we're at and what we're up to. And he's keeping record. If you don't think so, look in 2 Corinthians, the fifth, uh, chapter and the 10th verse. It said, for we, and it was talking to the church, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the things done in the flesh, whether they're good or bad. God knows what we're doing, where we're at, and what we're accomplishing. So he's trying to get our attention. But we, he began, Jeremiah, in the sixth chapter of Jeremiah, was trying to show us the reasons why we're not listening to him. And that's what I want us to think about this morning. I'm going to list off four or five things that he talked about. Number one, we're given to covenants. Now, I don't, I don't think there's one of us, but what is looked around and saw things that we really didn't need but sure would like to have. You understand where I'm coming from. We want to keep up with everybody else. Most of us don't need what we have. We're blessed beyond measure. And still we covet more, more, and more. In the church, 
We have allowed ourselves to follow after covenant or lust after the things of the world till it's got us so busy we don't have time to serve God. Now, if you'll look back in the 13th verse of this chapter, he begins to list off the things that are taking our mind off of God, leading us somewhere else. And number one was covetous. One what the neighbor has or wanting that that they have. I listed these. Most of us, uh, uh, a bigger house. Everybody's got to have a bigger house. They want to build something bigger and better than everybody else. <laughs> Don't know it, but we got more than we need at the same time. And then the smallest to the greatest of the things we covet after a bigger house, newer car. Everything my neighbor has, I want to have what they have. Reminds me, we're almost like children. When, when children are small, if their friends has a new toy, they want it. Yeah, not so bad. Look at the adults. Look at us adults. We're guilty of the same thing. And Jeremiah said, this will take our mind off of God. We will not listen to what he's, God's saying to us. So we need to put away some of our covetous things. Secondly, in the thir uh, latter part of the 13th verse, he said the people are having a problem of being honest. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time in my life, and some of you remember it as well, that a man's word was his bond, or a woman's word was her bond. When I was young growing up, people borrowed money on simply on the word that they would pay it back. Bank don't do that anymore because people were too dishonest. But if you borrow something, as God's people, we should be honest enough we pay it back and no matter what it takes nor how it does it, we will be honest in our dealings. If you owe somebody something, pay it. If you can't pay it, then at least go sit down and talk to them about it. Let them know that you're honest in your dealing. But Jeremiah said they wasn't honest. They wasn't people of their word. Help us to be people of our word. The world's looking at the church. It's not what we say we are, but it's what we do and what we example we show in front of. And if you can't be honest, you'll not be what God wants you to be. Let me promise you that because Jeremiah said they couldn't be honest in their dealing. They wouldn't do it. They were having a problem. Men and women today have lost their ability to really want to be honest. They just live like the world. God said, come out from among the world and be a separate people. He wants us to be different from the world. I know that we're in the world to help them, but we need to be of a different character and a different standard. He said that you won't hear me if you're not honest and you leave. Then the 14th verse, and this is what we needed today. We, and when I, I say this, we sometimes want to help people, but we're almost like the Bible says, when they're hungry to say to them, be ye filled and God bless you. And we don't want to do anything about it. What are we doing for our fellow man? How are we helping them out? Jeremiah said they, they would slightly help one another and say peace, peace. And then turn their back on it, not do anything about it. What are we doing? What is the church are we doing uh, to help our fellow man? Now, there's a lot of ways we can help. A lot of times we can be there to help them to carry their load. A lot of times we can help by what they're into. But most of all, I believe God wants us to be there to help them to know him in the free partner seat. 
want us to share the message of Christ and share the love of God with those that we come in contact with. He said, oh, he said, my people say they're helping, but they're not doing it. They're just saying, peace, peace. I want you to look at Israel today. Less than six months ago, they were hollering and talking about peace, peace, peace in the Middle East. Peace didn't happen. It blew up. Now there's turmoil on every side. <laughs> I was sharing with Gaynell a few nights ago when they were talking about and they sent the, uh, the drone over that bombed one of the buildings in Tel Aviv. When I got off the plane in Tel Aviv, I could see that building just across the landing strip. It's gone now. They thought they had peace, but it blew up. Now, it, it's blowed up all over the place. I'm telling you, today we need to be at peace with ourselves, with our neighbors, and those around us, and live for Christ. Then goes on further. In the 15th verse, and this is the one that just wraps me up. There's no shame in what people do. <laughs> Again, go to Walmart. You see things there that, 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 that would, should make people be embarrassed and blushed to see what they're seeing. And it's commonplace. I'm telling you, there's no shame in America. The church needs to be different. Again, I come back to reinforce this. We're not to live like them. We're not to dress like them. We're not to be a, a part of their style. God wants us to be a different people. Now, he made a, in the word, and I, I can show it to you if you want to go read it. He said, my people are peculiar people. They're different than the world. Are we different? Or are we just mixing in and going a part of it? He said, they don't have any shame anymore. It doesn't matter what people do today. They are not ashamed of it. Don't care who knows it. Going about bragging about the sin they're involved in. If you listen to the commercials on our politicians, they don't care that they've had a dozen abortions knowing that sin was what got them where it was. I'm telling you, we need to get some shame back in the church what's going on. We need to come to where we're living in a place that we don't want to act like the world. We want to be different. Then he goes on just a little bit further. He said, when all of this is taking place, we need to look for the old past. And if you uh, follow on down, the scripture said, look for the old past and trod therein. Wherein is the good way? If it's a good way, we ought to be in it as the church. And we shouldn't be too proud that we've made a mistake and turn back to God and begin to live like the scriptures teach us. Eddie, I appreciate the Sunday school lesson. Talking about letting the Spirit of God lead us. Are we afraid of the Spirit of God? <laughs> I shared with you a little bit uh, on our trip, Michael and Shana was over in a group of black folks. Probably, probably 150, wasn't it, Mike, or about 150. When the victory of God was shown in the program, boy, they got excited and began to praise the Lord. They wasn't ashamed of the Holy Spirit that dwelled in them. Are you ashamed of him? He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Boy, it's time we, we go back and dig out the old ways. When people were excited about what Jesus was doing for them and they didn't care to praise the Lord, lift him up and exalt him. He said if the church, when his disciples told me, he said if they don't praise me, he said I can cause these rocks to rise up and praise me. Boy, I'm telling you, church will rise up and begin to praise the Lord and worship him. Get excited about what God's done for us. What he's doing for us. Folks, we've got the victory. We are on the winning side. 
I read the last chapter. I know who wins the war and we're on the winning side. Let's get excited about Jesus and begin to praise his name. Amen. Let the world know where we're at. Then in the, if you want to read in the 14th and 15th verse of the 7th chapter, I'm going, to, I'm going to turn and read those. Because I want you to see something that, that's a part of this. He said, therefore will I do unto this house or unto the church, uh, if you'll uh, take it down, he, he classed his people as a house, which is called by my name, which is Christians, if you're Christ-like or followers of Christ. He said, which uh, wherein ye trust and unto the place uh, which I gave to you and to your fathers and have done this to Shiloh. He said, I will cast, notice that, positive frame of words. He said, I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim, or to the Jewish nation. He said, they rejected me, I cast them out. They was let down in bondage. We went up and listened to Michael Sheridan Thursday night about uh, Daniel and the things that happened in Daniel's life and the prayer. They were all cast out down in Babylon because they refused to repent and to walk with God. Now, if we're going to re repent, guess what? God's not a respecter of person. We're going to reap what we sow. God's wanting us to come clean and be what he'd have us to be. How does it stand with you and the Lord? Is God in the writing on the wall? We read a, we, as we were watching, Belchazer saw the man's hand coming right on the wall and he, when he got the interpretation, he said, thou art waiting the balances and found warning. Church, are we found warning today? Have we rejected what God wants to? What well, if we do, we need to find our way back to the altar and repent and get back where God would have us to. She's come down. You have a need and you want to come. She's going to play. You come. But it's up to us. Now we can change the course. God don't cast us out if we're walking with him. But if we reject him and don't do what he said to, then we're in trouble. Where are you at with the Lord as we stand? You have a need but like to come. You come. Others want to come and make it a way down the altar to pray. Boy, it's a good time just to come and talk to God. Yes, amen. Yes, yes, Fill in the altar. Thank you. Father, as we bow with these that have come, Father, I need to talk to you things in their life. God, even ourselves, as we bow our hearts before you, to ask you, Father, to forgive us of our shortcomings. Father, we have so many. God, and we know that you said if we rejected you, you'd reject us. God, we don't want to do that. We want our lives to be that that you would have us to be. Father, we're trying to humble our hearts to call on your name. Father, you said if we would, you'd hear. Father, you'd heal our land. Father, I'm worried about our country, our land. Father, we're leaving for our young folks. God, I pray that you would help us to humble our hearts. Seek your face. God, then turn. Help us, Father, that our lives will not be the same that we'll be that that you would have us to be. Father, I pray now that you could just hear each prayer that's going up. God, we want our prayers banded together. You said as long as any two agree touching, God, you'd grant it. God, we're claiming that promise this morning. 
Father, I pray you could just touch, hear the prayers, answer the prayers, Father, and what their burdens they have and what's in their life. I pray, Father, now that you could just have your way. God, we'll praise you and we'll thank you for it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to we're going to have that surgery. All right, got a couple of chairs, Mike. Danny, if you will come. Danny's going to have his knee replaced Friday. We'll pray for him and Teresa. They both got needs, things going. We want to just come and pray for them as they come together. You can touch one or whatever, wherever you have. Get you know, We're going to pray for them. God answers. He said the right the prayer of a righteous fervent prayer of a righteous availeth much. God can guide the surgeon. He can heal whatever they need, he can heal it. So let's pray with them. And if you will lead us as we pray, please. Us in your word, Lord, that's where we're coming by help and I need. Lord, as we come this hour we have to reach the meaning. Lord, we, we know that these bodies that you've made, that you've created, you know how to work. Lord, you know how to heal the things yes, you are right. We thank you for doctors that you give us, the methods that they have, things that they know the knowledge that you give them. Yes, Lord, your hand just be upon the Lord. The earth is going to cover it up, and you would just be, Lord, we're going to lead in that. So I've had your way, Mr. Lord. Yes. Lord, as Lord is waiting for comfort of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. We ask for a peace, Lord, that you and you alone can give, Father, and the Lord, that you things that we don't want to face, God. Battles that we have from time to time in life, yes, Lord, we're glad that you're greater. Oh, anything that comes against us. So, Lord, I pray you just lift them up in spirit. Give them strength and courage, Lord, that they need for you above all else. Yes. Lord, for your name and power. So we know you read. We know your mind. We know your name. We trust and we believe in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Fellowship, what was about?